All right, there he is, Danny Briere, the general manager of the Philadelphia Flyers. And uh, I'm going to take a wild guess here, Danny, that uh, you're probably one of the more popular NHL general managers out there right now because it's pretty clear what you're what you're trying to do, right? As far as the Flyers are concerned, you're going through a rebuild. So are the calls just coming in left, right, and center on an hourly basis? I, I don't know if I'm the most popular. I don't know what the other guys are going through, but it's uh, it's learning on the fly quite quickly here uh, for yeah. me. Um, it's It's been pretty exciting. Um, yes, yeah, so a lot of guys are reaching out, trying to figure out what what we're trying to get get done um it's it's pretty clear i think we've we've been up front about you know the rebuild and uh trying to build a good base acquiring either young prospects or draft capital mm -hmm. uh to position ourselves down the road in in, in better spots so um lots of ask but at the same time you know and i've said it from the beginning i'm not looking to completely tank here uh or I, i'm not looking to tank uh, i want to make sure that we're still a competitive team, um, you know, and, you know, with towards behind the bench, uh, we have a lot of good uh, players that are good, that competed hard last year. And we want to make sure that that is still the case uh, moving forward. Now you're obviously so new into all of this. I, I ran into you at a, I don't know if you remember, it was one of the first home games of last year. Um, yeah. You know, we were just getting going in the start of last year. I was saying, I was asking, so what are you doing? What are you what exactly? And it seemed like you were touching a bunch of different places in the organization. At yep. what point did you realize this might be the next step? Like you might go from what you were doing then, which was American League business side, you were here, there, and kind of everywhere, yep. to the to the big chair. I um I I didn't expect it to happen so quick. You know I. I felt that I uh, was going in that direction, having the chance to touch, um, you know, on different departments. I, yeah, I spent time on the business side before, uh, learn how to manage uh, and build from scratch a, a minor league team. And then, you know, the last few years here with the Flyers, lots of time on player development side, lots of time in Lehigh Valley in the American League, uh, in the meetings with amateur scouting and pro scouting. So I, I was getting to touch on different departments. Uh, I, I thought it was awesome. I, I, I loved every minute of it, uh, but I, I didn't think it would happen this quick. Unfortunately, you know, the team going in the direction we had we had happened last year kind of forced things a little bit, um, you know, but now it's pretty exciting. But I, I have to admit, when it first happened, I was definitely a little overwhelmed. <laughs> okay, that was that, I was just going to ask. So when we're playing and we're sitting at the back of the bus as we get older, we got all the ideas. We got all the answers. <laughs> Why don't they do this? Why does a manager do this? So you get hired, you have your press conference. The next day you walk in the office and it's your office. Like, what do you, what's the first thing that you do when you sit down? Well, you're trying to get a grasp of everything going on. Um, the, the good thing is the, uh, the trade deadline had just happened. Um, so there wasn't yeah. a lot of um, getting into uh, trading or making trades or negotiating contracts at the time. Um, I, I was lucky enough, I think on day two, I had to go to the uh, uh, GM meetings down in Florida. So I got the chance to meet all the GMs face to face. So instead of calling one by one and trying to get in touch with all the guys, uh, I got to meet them face to face down in Florida. So that helped. Um, you know, I, I think for me, the first thing was getting a grasp of where we were in as an organization. Um, and I don't mean on the hockey team and the players, it was most, mo mostly in, on, uh, in the front office, uh, what needs to be done, um, what needs to change, what needs to be readjusted. So that was kind of the the first order of business that I had uh, the chance to do from the trade deadline, basically to the end of the season. Yeah, well, it didn't take you long to to kind of sink your teeth in as a general manager, making a pretty significant trade, I would say. I mean, uh, Provorov ends up with the Columbus Blue Jackets. So what's it been like uh, maybe prior leading up to that three-way trade and where you're at today? Like, are there managers out there that are trying to fleece, take advantage of, what they might consider to be a, an inexperienced GM? I, I, I'm sure sure they are. Um, I think at this <laughs> point, everybody is just positioning. Uh, but I, I was really happy with uh, the, the, the chance to uh, kind of get get your first trade out of the way. Um, you know, so I, I really appreciated 
uh, Yarmo and uh, Rob Blake to, to be willing to to move ahead and, and do mm. it because you don't see a lot of trades while the playoffs are still going on. So um, I really appreciated that they were willing to uh, to move ahead and not waste uh, any more time. And uh, the cool part in that trade, I felt, was that everybody was getting what, what they wanted and what they needed for their organization. So uh, everybody got a little bit of, of what they were looking for. When so right around the same time, of course, well, not at the same time, you get you get hired and now you said you've got to come in and build or find out what the organization needs. That leads to the hiring of Keith Jones and now Patrick Sharp and John LeClaire are more involved or back in the fold, ex Flyers who, you know, had terrific careers there. What how do you put that all together? Like how do you how do you do? You, is it from the years that you've sat there in the next chair and go, oh, this is how they put a staff together? Like, what makes it yours? Yeah. Well, I, you know, one of the area where I had an advantage, I felt, was uh, having a chance to be around the organization for so long and, uh, you know, having my own opinion on on what needed to be done. Uh, when you get in or walk into a new organization, the first few months usually are. Uh, are there for you to get a, you know, assess the staff that you have around you and to see what makes sense. Um, I had the luxury to come in in the place that I, I knew that I was very comfortable with. Um, and, and it was easier to make those decisions, I felt, in, in what areas we, we needed to readjust it. Uh, to get readjusted. So um, that, that that was kind of the beginning of it. And, uh, you know, those two guys that you mentioned, Patrick Sharp, I think was, first of all, the no-brainer. He's going to help with our young guys. You know, the the direction that we're going in, in acquiring, acquiring you know, young assets and draft picks, you got to make sure they're, they, they develop into players that are going to help you down the road. That's the key for, for doing mm-hmm. this. Um, so adding uh, Patrick and John LeClaire, I thought, um, was right up that alley. They're they're going to be both tremendous in that area to start with, and and then you know their experience, the fact that they have won uh, Stanley Cups, um, mm-hmm. that they've been around for so long. I I, I thought uh, it, it was a perfect fit for us. Dang, how do you how do you deal with speculation from from guys like us or just the media in general? I mean, that Philadelphia market is a hungry, rabid hockey market, sports market. Period. So. <laughs> You know, constantly, I'm sure you're being asked, okay, well, are you seriously considering trading Konechny or Lawton or Carter Hart? Are you listening? <laughs> like, what are you doing? And, and is the answer to that, you know, well, we have to listen on just about everything. It, yeah, and it's my duty, uh, you know, as a GM. That's the way I see it. I, I, I have to be fair to the organization. Um, you know, a lot of those names that you mentioned, I am not shopping. I'm not looking to uh, to trade them. But it's my duty to listen if, if there are GMs that, uh, you know, have some interest and uh, really are willing to, to pay a, a hard, heavy price for those guys. I have to listen and do what's right for, for the organization. So, um, yeah, there's names that I'm, I'm definitely not, you know, calling GMs about, but I, I will listen on everybody. Uh, now, this is just my, <clears throat> my view of going, you know, I'll go back to my playing days. But back to more importantly, when I started to broadcast to now, used to go into Philadelphia scared to death. <laughs> like you'd you'd go in there and I did too. <laughs> the old, remember that walk down that hallway at the Spectrum, Danny? I, yeah. It kept getting shorter. I'm like, Jesus, those guys are so big that are waiting at the end of this tunnel. Yeah. Just, you know what it was? Just... You know what it was for me? It was the the orange partition on the ice too. Oh. It felt yeah, it felt like you were in you know, and like in a ring, um, you know, yeah. it, 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 there's something the, about and it. The roof that, yeah. was low. The yeah, roof was yeah. low. Oh, I yeah. didn't like it. And anyway, <laughs> what I was going to ask was, how do you, you talk about, we want to build these young prospects. We want to acquire more young players. We, of course, the game is far different than certainly when I played. And then when you yep. played, <clears throat> but how do you balance the, the Philly way? Like Philly's yep. a, tough place it and it and it had it it you could just feel it walking in there and balance it with the new way that the game is yeah. played like how do you balance that yeah there's um i i think it can be an advantage if, if it's used properly now when i say that i 
am very aware that we're not the Broad Street bullies. It doesn't exist, and you can't play that way anymore. No. Uh, but but we've seen we've seen in the playoffs, um, you know how how well Florida did with a very very physical team. Um, you know, so I I, I think there's still. Uh, it's still a, a really important part of the game, uh, especially when you get into the playoffs that, you know, in Philadelphia can can be used as an advantage without, you know, crossing the line. And it's always, you know, finding that fine line, um, you know, also the, 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 fa- the fans being so passionate about about this team. Um, there's an identity that, that we need to have that we're not going to be a soft team to play against. We're not going to be pushovers. Now, when you're rebuilding and you're not, you know, at the top of the league, you're not quite the contender that you hope to be. Um, the important part for me is is the culture that we're building, and Torts calls it the standard. Um, so the, having the right standard there for our players to come in that we're still going to play hard, we're still going to compete, we're going to give you everything that, that we have to try to win every single game. That's the approach that we have. We, we don't believe in tanking. We're not trying to, uh, you know, finish last to, you know, get the best shot at, at a first overall pick. If it happens, it happens, and it's going to be a miserable season. But the most important part is, is how our guys conduct themselves, how they approach every game, how prepared they are. So to me, that sets the next stage uh, moving forward. And um, it, it's something to me that is non-negotiable in Philadelphia. Is, is, that, the, is that the part? Um, I think most, most people are interested seeing how now that you're taking over, you're new, you've got your new staff, and you've got John Tortorella as your head coach. Is that the part where you and he have to be on the same page? So you're not acquiring a player that doesn't fit and his standard you understand like it it's um it's a pretty important yep. step to bridge yep. there yeah and 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 i think sometimes we um we have the um, um wrong perception of of torts uh torts is mm-hmm. on board towards the man's hard work um competitive players every single night uh but he's also on board he knows what needs to be done um, you know, he's, he's a sharp guy and he totally gets it and he knows where we're at. Um, but yeah, him and I will talk and we'll, we'll discuss players that are, uh, coming in to make sure that they, they fit what we're, we're trying to do. Well, well I gotta he, say that. Yeah. Go sorry, ahead, I was just going to say the the league is a better place when the flyers are in the mix. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you feel that? Do you feel that? Like, is there pressure to that? Or is it just, Hey, look, I'm trying to build the best team we can build here. Well, I, I'm a little biased, so yeah, I think that, the, that it's a better place when the Flyers are doing well. So uh, it really is, though. You know, but again, it's it, it's finding that 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 perfect balance. I I feel for you know the last ten years, there's been too much patchwork. Uh, that's just my own perception. Mm-hmm. Um, in you know, instead of doing and, and building from the ground up. Um, you know, the way we think it should be done. There's been a lot of patchwork and, and try to get it done. And um, right or wrong, I you know, there, there's years that the Flyers were right there. Injuries decimated this team. But, um, you know, we want to try to do it the right way from, from the ground up, give us our chance to build around certain key players um, for the future and, and become a team that's not just going to be, you know, one year in the playoffs, one year out of the playoffs, one year in the playoffs. And mm. then, you know, m- maybe, you know, going around sometimes two rounds, but it's been so long. I, I'd like to build a team that's going to be a, a contender uh, year after year. I'm not saying they're going to win the cup every single year, but at least they compete and they contend and they have a shot at it. Yeah. And big part of doing that, Danny, is, is building through draft and then obviously developing. And it's, it's a wild time of year. So how much are you looking forward to the upcoming draft in Nashville? And the follow up to that is how busy do you think you're going to be? How active will the Philadelphia Flyers potentially be on the trade front? There? Well, yeah, first of all, yes, I, I'm super excited. And um, and adding a, another first-round pick uh, this year in the Provorov trade gets our amateur scouts really excited to have mm-hmm. two cracks added going into it. Now, things could change um, depending <laughs> on what comes my way or our way, but um, I, I don't know how, how active I'm going to be. It's it's easy to say that, yeah, I, I want to be active, but y- you need a dancing partner, sometimes two, like you've seen in, in the last trade, um, to, to make things happen. So um, we're going to try to make things happen, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. What's your most pressing need, do you say? I mean, is it just 
good young kind of age sensitive players to grow with some of the younger guys you already have in house? Yes, that's that's our goal. That's our goal yeah. to to you know get some good young players that are going to help us tremendously down the road. Um, as far as our lineup in the moment, um, you know we're we're always looking to to get it better. Uh, you know, up front, we'd like to add a little bit of depth. Uh, center position is always an area that everybody wants to to increase uh, that position because it's important. But we're, we're looking at everything, and, and the, the most important part for us would be uh, young assets or draft capital. Okay, last question for me. You're now the, you're an assistant. You're walking around. You're thinking. You gotta, you know, you're away from the rink. You're doing your thing, and you're thinking about the team. Now you're the manager. At, is there a time in the day you are not thinking of the Philadelphia Flyers? <laughs> <laughs> there's um, there's a few moments, a few minutes during the day when I get home and I see my uh, little 15 year old uh, boy, uh, you know, yelling my name. Uh, that that's that's about it. Maybe when I fall asleep at night for a couple hours. At the moment, that's that's about the only time I don't think about the Flyers. Well, and the reason I ask is, <laughs> as you know, Cammies and with the Vancouver Canucks, she'll be cooking dinner or doing something. And then she'll have a thought and I can just see she's thinking, thinking, thinking. And I'm like, well, yeah. she's just gone right now. So I assume yeah. it's like that all the time. Oh yeah. My wife will say some, some things to me that, you know, 10 minutes later I'll ask about the same thing, but just that she just <laughs> told me, tell me. So yeah, it's, it's pretty funny. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot going on. There's all kinds of things being thrown at you. Uh, but I love it. It's it's really exciting. I I'm, I wouldn't want it any other way. Yeah, I think we've all been accused of maybe not paying as close attention to our wives as we <laughs> normally should. So don't feel bad Definitely. about that, one, Danny. You're in good company. Can you can you let her know that? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just did. Anyway, bud, thanks for doing this. We know it's uh, again a very busy time of year for every NHL general manager, but. We're looking forward to uh, some of the action around the Philadelphia Flyers and perhaps better years ahead. Good luck. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, Thanks Danny. All the best, Dave. Thank you.